Welcome back everyone. So many of you requested a tutorial on how I made these horns for my She Devil tutorial, so I'm going to show you today. I started off by using this product called Polymorph. I actually found it via my nephews as they have a version of this for children so they can make little models out of it. And this is a plastic that melts in hot water and it becomes translucent and it allows you to model things by hand and then when it cools it goes really hard. I'm applying a small handful of this into a Tupperware dish. I found a handful of this was enough to make two horns. Initially I put boiling water from the kettle in, once it goes translucent I then apply some cooler water into it so that I can put my fingers in it and it won't burn me. I'm using the handle of a metal spoon to scoop up my melted polymorph. You may find it all starts to stick together, just wrap it around your spoon a few times until you've got the amount that you need. Then you want to just squeeze it together and then start rolling it between your hands just to form a little sausage shape. Then I'm going to create a flat bottom by pressing it onto the table and this is going to be the base of our horn. I'm using my fingers to pinch the top so we're going to create that nice pointed horn shape at the very tip. Because the product's still warm it will keep melting our shape so keep putting it back on the table and flattening that base. But as it starts to cool you'll find that it starts to hold the shape a little bit better so it's a case of constantly manipulating it while it's setting into place. Don't forget although you're going to be creating a nice point to your tip you want to bend it backwards slightly so the horn comes out of your forehead and goes upwards. What's great about polymorph is if it starts to set too quickly and you haven't got your shape just pop it back into hot water and it'll melt again. As it starts to set you'll see that the surface becomes a little bit squidgy but obviously starting to harden so I'm just using my fingers to press my prints into them which is going to create a lot of texture to the horn. Then I'm going to create some ridges into it to give it more of a bone effect. I'm using a blunt knife just to gently score along the surface and leave a light indentation. And I'm doing this all the way around the horn. If it's still quite soft and it's losing its shape a little bit, again, don't be afraid to use your fingers just to mould it back into shape. Polymorph is a reusable product, so if you don't paint it, you can always reuse it, melt it down, start again if you're not quite getting the shape right. It's just really handy to use. Now these aren't the lightest of horns, not in comparison to a latex pair for instance. They stuck with no problem and they didn't come off and they weren't uncomfortable to wear but if you made anything on a larger scale you might find you have problems with it because it might be heavy. Once you're happy with your shape we're going to place that into some cold water and this is just going to help to set the rest of the plastic. You'll know once it's set because it goes completely white, it's no longer translucent. I chose to paint mine with alcohol activated paints as I know it's going to be waterproof. So I'm using IPA, my Illustrator Flesh Palette and my Body Illusion Makeup Palette from Krylon. But you could just use generic face paints. For this I'm going to be using two bone colour shades from my Krylon palette and two of the brown shades from my Flesh Tone palette. I'm dipping my brush into the IPA and I'm mixing together the two flesh tones in my Krylon palette to create a bone colour and I'm going to use this all over my horn. This is going to be the base colour of the horn. If you're using face paints you could pick up two flesh colours that you can mix together to create a bone shade. But remember face paint is water activated so if you go out and it's raining you might find that your horns get ruined. I'm taking this middle brown shade next and I'm applying that to the base of the horn, dragging the colour up. Don't panic if the paint sets before you've finished off blending it, just dip your brush back into the IPA and go straight onto the horn and just blend the colour out. That's what's great about working with the alcohol activated paints. If there's an area with concentrated colour, you can break it down with just a little bit of the IPA on your brush. So I'm working that colour all the way around the base of the horn, pulling the colour upwards towards the centre with what's left on my bristles. Using the tip of my brush dipped in the same brown, I'm going to drag the colour through the ridges that we made with the blunt knife. Again, place the colour on straight away and then use a little bit of the alcohol dipped on the brush just to gently fade the colour out a little bit because we want it to be subtle but visible enough to create that depth. Again, we're going to do this all the way around the horn, not forgetting to do the very tip and then again, if you've got any concentrated amount of colour, just use your brush dipped in a little bit of the alcohol. Next, I'm mixing the medium and dark brown together and we're going to go over that base area again. 
This time we're keeping it slightly lower and we're dragging the colour up through the base of the ridges that we've created with the blunt knife. Same as before, we're going to work this all the way around the horn. Only this time, if you do get a concentrated amount of colour, try not to add as much alcohol to this because you will remove the colour that's underneath and obviously that's going to strip it straight back to the white horn. So if you do want to break down a little bit of the colour, just dip the brush in the alcohol, blot that off onto a bit of tissue and then work that over the horn. As before, we're going to work a little bit of that colour down from the tip. Again, we want to keep this quite subtle, so we're going to place a little bit of colour on, then break it down with a little bit of alcohol. I'm going to start layering some highlighted areas. So I'm taking the lightest of the two bone shades from my Krylon palette. I'm going to add some stroke lines from the tip downwards towards the middle of the horn. This is going to help to highlight those ridges we created with the blunt knife. So we want to place that highlight colour on the centre in between each of those ridges. To add some depth to the base of the horn, I'm applying a little bit of the black. I'm only applying a very small amount and then I'm using a little bit of the alcohol just to disperse the colour into the brown. To make sure it doesn't look too black, I'm going back in with the darkest brown and fading that over the top. Layering the colours is going to give us the most realistic effect. And then same as we've done with all the colours, work the same shade all the way around the base of the horn. Once you've completed layering the black and brown, your horn is more or less complete. When I glued my horn to my face during the tutorial, I did add a little bit of red to it. So you could do that at this stage. I'll just show you what it looks like with a little bit of red on the base. By adding this at the very bottom over the black, it's going to create extra depth and it will save you having to do it when you're applying it to your face. Instead, you can just take your time colouring your sculpt gel in and you don't have to worry about doing anything additional to your horns. The red I'm using here is the darkest red in my Krylon body illustration palette. Remember to leave the flat base of your horn with no colour on as this is where you're going to apply your adhesive. So I hope you enjoyed my DIY devil horn tutorial. If you do recreate them, please tag me on your Instagram post so I can see them. If you'd like to see the horns in action, you can see my she devil tutorial which you can click on here now. If you click on the handsome jack one which is on the right, it will take you to my Halloween playlist. Please hit subscribe if you haven't already done so and don't forget you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and they're all at Show Me Makeup.